to this week's video. This week we'll be talking about healthy sleep and how to achieve it if we do not get healthy sleep. I'm going to quick put this right here. If you want to know more about actual sleep disorders themselves, how you know which one you might have, or more details on a certain aspect of this video, since I'm gonna be touching on a lot, but only touching and focusing more on how to get back on your good sleep schedule, you can either message me on any of my uh, outlets or comment in the section, or if a lot of people end up contacting me, I'll do a video on just that. So let's get to it. So what constitutes healthy sleep? Healthy sleep constitutes having the proper sufficient amount of both rapid eye movement, REM, REM, um, and non-REM sleep throughout the night. So having enough of each stage and enough cycles of each throughout the night, uninterrupted. It is not just about the amount of time that you're sleeping, those seven to eight hours is the average amount for the average person to have full functioning throughout the day. But that's not for everyone. Uh, it's just mainly making sure that you have enough of the alterations throughout your brain of REM and non-REM sleep throughout the night. And 70 to 80% of the night is non-REM. Um, and nightmares or having a nightmare linked to disorder does constitute as a disruption within your sleep cycle throughout the night. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, there's usually about four cycles of having both throughout the night in order to have full functioning full brain functioning throughout the night. <laughs> uh, people with insomnia, PTSD and mood disorders, um, and other sleep disturbances will not achieve enough sleep cycles or stages of sleep throughout the night, which can of course cause us problems. Um, sleep drive is at its highest at night and the lowest in the morning. Um, Napping actually also reduces our sleep drive. So even though you might feel like, oh, I, this nap will really rejuvenate me, it'll get me back on track, it's gonna still kind of get you off your cycle, like your actual sleep cycle in the circadian process or circadian sleep cycle, whichever way you wanna call it, because it can be listed as various things depending on your outlet, whatever. I always say it wrong too. I'm a I'm I'm a studier and a reader, even though I take classes. Don't ask. Uh, anyway, so then we're gonna get into the circadian or circadian, however you want to pronounce it. Blah 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 blah. Uh, process. So that is determined by basically all it is is your biological clock. So it's determined by that and body temperature as well as the light and darkness among you. So our bodies are actually programmed to sleep at night, at darkness. There's something in us that says, it's dark, time to sleep. It's light, it's time to wake up. And one of the options f for getting yourself back on a healthy sleep cycle is actually something called light therapy, which is also something that's used um, for like people with depression as well. And um, so with body temperature, um, your internal body temperature is at its lowest around 3 to 4 a.m. for the average person and the highest around 9 to 10 and we tend to fall asleep when it's starting to when it's falling and we wake up when it's beginning to rise one note I'm gonna quick make like, even though I said I'm not gonna go in-depth on disorders is if you are somebody that's curious um, an interesting fact is that people who have just insomnia are afraid to not sleep and they focus on that while trying to go to sleep and people who have PTSD with insomnia tend to be afraid to go to sleep. So there are various things that can cause us to have sleep disturbances or sleep disorders. As I mentioned, like PTSD and mood disorders do have a link, depression, anxiety, all that. Uh, chronic stress, 
and overstimulation can cause chronic sleep issues, hormonal imbalances, uh, and that's not just reproductive hormones, it can also be your adrenal and your thyroid, all of that. Um, stimulants or substances that are like processed, too much sugar, the types of food in general that you would eat throughout the day, um, poor so like poor diet, um, chronic pain, which seems kind of obvious as well, sleep apnea, which I would put under actually a result um, of various things, but some would say sleep apnea is, that's one of those things just like with the mood disorders and PTSD where it's, they cre create a cycle within each other. Um, you might start with one and then it creates the other to be more aggressive or, you know, you start with the other one and then yeah, so it becomes a cycle. Uh, and then also, like, what you're doing throughout the day, how much technology you're using throughout the day, all that kind of stuff can lead to not having good sleep. Stress and diet are two of the bigger ones. Calcium and magnesium deficiencies as well as just not, like your work schedule or your life just in general not allowing you to kind of stay on that like that bi uh, biological clock that we all have and then our whole healthy sleep cycle gets disrupted and then once we may be able to regain but really honestly that's not true like we all are not uh, we all are created to be up during the day and go to sleep at night as I said darkness light but we train ourselves and then we wonder why we may have a lack of sleep why we can't fully function why we are getting all these health problems which now I'm going to get into various things that can happen due to lack of sleep and I'm going to include a spiritual aspect as well at the end. Irregular and impaired sleep and full-on disorders can definitely have huge effects on your physical, your mental, your spiritual well-being. And if you do have PTSD or one of the other disorders mentioned before, prior, it's comorbid with a sleep issue, it's only going to exacerbate the issues. So, Mood and motivational changes. Negative emotions will be more common. Um, more depressive symptoms can occur. More likelihood of suicidal ideation in people that have uh, comorbid comorbidity uh, with sleep disturbances and another uh, mental health problem. Um, impaired attention spans and concentration. Memory loss for recent events. Uh, slowed responses, obviously fatigue, failure to stay on routine, impaired task performance, exaggerated feeling of physical exertion, f get, uh, pain being heightened. So if you are somebody that's not having problems sleeping due to chronic pain, the dis sleep disruption that you're getting from that is actually going to make the pain just even worse throughout the day. Um, lack of insight into the impairment, because you're not going to be fully there. Uh, social discomfort and increase in health problems. Now, what kind of health problems? There are so many, I can't even list them all. But, um, some are a heightened risk of weight gain. I'm sure a lot of you know that when you are fatigued or somewhat sleepy, you tend to eat more. Um, I was gonna make a state. Oh, well, I'll make it. <laughs> okay, let's say you are somebody that smokes weed, for example, or are on some type of medication that is like a downer effect. You're gonna want to eat just like if you are somebody that drinks. When you're out with your friends at the end of the night, a lot of you want to go and eat a bunch of junk food. When you're on something that is a downer or a depressant, it makes you want to eat. So the same thing is true when you don't sleep. 
well. And you also don't have the energy to work out, to, to do as much physical activity when you don't get correct amount of sleep. Uh, it also leads to things that like diabetes, um, obstructive sleep apnea, um, coronary and artery calcification and other heart issues. And the calcification is a marker for cardiovascular disease in general. So this is not good. Um, as for the spiritual aspect, it can impair your psychic abilities and it does block and your chakras and unbalance them. And it especially causes problems for the crown chakra, which, and, and third eye as well, but mainly the crown chakra. Um, so when you're bogged down and everything's clouded, your crown chakra is going to be extremely, extremely messed up. And you're, it's just not good if you're somebody who is some sort of pagan or your new age or whatever and you do magic work, you spell work, or you do some type of healing or uh, divination work, medium, etc. Ha having your sleep cycle off is just going to cause you a ton of problems. And I know that from myself, from ex my own experience. But yeah. And then, this is another one of those things that causes a cycle. If your crown chakra is being affected, then your reality and everything around you is going to be even more bogged down. And so then you're going to have more problems sleeping even more. So it's another one of those cycle things. But according to the certification course that I took um, about sleep disorders, the they themselves do not even endorse the use of sleep medication and the reason i'm bringing this up first is because i want to talk about that a lot of people will use things like ambien or just a benzo or something like seroquel um to help them go to sleep and a doctor or a psychiatrist will prescribe this for them to go to sleep but that only will exacerbate the problem um, in counseling and psychology and then in the holistic fields such as you know being new age pagan or just not wanting to be into normal western medic medicine which counseling is getting more and more away from the, the typical western ideal uh, anyways um, it exacerbates the problems so it's not allowing you to get the correct amount of of sleep cycles you or full REM or non REM um, and then you are foggy in the morning you this it, it just causes more problems than it needs and then if you don't have it you can't go back to just taking something like one of the, the number one recommended tips to help put you back on both in psychology and in holistic healing is taking melatonin and since your melatonin is also down if your sleep cycles off uh, that's not gonna work if you've been on more extreme medications for sleep because now your whole body is completely off even more so this is where it's recommended where actual therapy in form of CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, which has a lot of mindfulness aspects to it, I will say, and is very fine. And I am totally pro CBT, is tended to be um, recommended. So I'm just gonna put that out there and then I'm gonna get into the more holistic things, which are also what is recommended for sleep disorders in the psych world as well, too. But just keep that in mind. Same goes with alcohol. Don't use alcohol or things like that to try and get yourself to get back on the sleep cycle correctly because it's just going to screw everything up even more. So one way 
also is, like I said, melatonin, um, essential oils, either be wearing or putting on your linens. There are certain essential oils that are great for sleep. Plug for my business, I do have sleep ones, but I will say if you yourself just want to do something quick, lavender works wonders. Um, if you don't want to use mal uh, melatonin, you can use valerian roots instead. Um, you can use calcium and magnesium before bed because as I said before, sometimes sleep problems are associated with lower levels of magnesium and calcium and also eat a diet rich in those things. Uh, consider your sugar consumption, your caffeine consumption, and any other stimulant as well as how much processed food you're eating. Eating a healthier diet will definitely help with sleep. Also, do not eat for some say three hours before bed, some say four to five. I guess it really depends on the person. Don't do a heavy workout four to six hours before sleep. Again, that depends on the person if you want to continue a healthy sleep. And by heavy, I, I mean, I don't mean heavy. I mean more of like cardio or aerobic that gets your blood going and rushing. But yoga, there are yo type uh, some yoga that actually helps to put you to sleep, which I am going to put a link to some poses that help you go to sleep to do before bed. Um, practice deep breathing exercises. So take about 10 to 15 minutes before bed or while you're laying in bed and do deep inhales counting to 10 and then exhaling counting to 10. And you can do this by either thinking of something positive when you inhale and then releasing negatives to exhale, something of that nature. You can also incorporate meditation in this. There are guided sleep meditations. And I know that one of the other tips is to not watch anything or be on your phone for like a half hour to an hour prior to sleep, but you're technically not using it for viewing or using your brain, right? Um, you're putting on a guided sleep meditation. There's plenty of them on YouTube. I have a personal list playlist for myself at night that plays throughout the night. And when I do that, I actually do get back on my normal sleep cycle. Uh, those really help you because they t walk you down into sleep. Well, also some of them help with manifestation work too. So that's something that's great. Well, we're still on the topic of mindfulness, things like meditation and just mindful breathing. The reason why this works is because it does lower your blood pressure and it does reduce throbbing, swelling, and pain. So like sometimes you might have a headache and you start meditating and it goes away. So, it, and if you're very, very busy and if your mind is racing a million times an hour, doing these techniques helps to calm the brain and helps to calm you to go to sleep. Another type of mindfulness or and meditation that can help with sleep besides guided and just basic mindful breathing is the body scan meditation, which starts out with mindful breathing, and then you gradually direct your attention to every part of your body, starting with the top or the crown chakra down into the root chakra, uh, and then down to your toes. And you, some people feel a tingling sensation, some feel like a warming sensation throughout their body or heavy and sinking into bed it helps to calm. It's also a good idea to maybe like do like where you tense the area that you're doing the body scan in and then release it while you're at each one. Or you can envision like a little ball of light, like an orb going through each place. Or you can envision something. Visualization also really helps doing visualization exercises as you're laying in bed. Back to CBT. This is CBT is recommended on some mindfulness site or mindfulness and holistic sites as well as in some books that are pagan and I have one that's new age because my mom's new age so I get a hold of those too. They actually do still bring up CBT and I'm bringing this up again because there are certain CBT things that you can do on your own that are like just CBT exercises. Um such as creating a good schedule and then throughout the day we're doing reconstruction if a negative thought is coming because 
whether you have an already disorder or because of your sleep being off, which creates negativity. Um, if a negative thought comes, you're like t re focusing it and re reconstructing it with a positive thought replacement, journaling, doing things of that nature is very good before bed. Creating a sleep friendly environment. Don't be doing too much chilling or like hanging out in your bed before bed. Uh, you want your bed to be something that's comfortable and soothing when you go into it. So also, um, even though you might use your phone, for example, for this guided meditation, turn off your ringer so that there's no, if somebody calls or texts or you get a Facebook notification or anything like that, it doesn't disrupt your sleep and wake you up. Try, if, if you don't have time to clean your whole house and organize your whole house, try to make your room at least feel somewhat zen and feng shui. Just have that room be your nice little place to go so it has that peaceful environment. You can manage stress. That's what you need to do. Manage stress. You can do that with CBT. You can do that with the mindfulness things. You can also do that with exercise. I mentioned the yoga poses that I'm going to put below that can help you sleep. But if you do earlier cardio or aerobic exercise throughout the day, at some point, again, don't do it at a certain amount of hours prior to bed, but it will help lower your stress levels. And if they state that it can actually help you get 48 more minutes on average more sleep per night. Taking a hot, warm, relaxing bath. Again, I don't want... Okay, I'm not going to plug my stuff again. But I know my business started with tarot cards and bath bombs. Anyways. No. So, like, a hot, warm bath. Whether it be with candlelight, reading a book in the bathtub, having some herbs and oils that help you relax get and sleep. Having a bubble bath with, like, lavender bubble bath. Something like that. Really, really helps to get you back into wanting to sleep, uh, relax, and gets you back onto your sleep cycle. I'm going to put um, information about light therapy and sleep in the description box below instead of explaining all that as well. Also keep your room at a cooler temperature if you can and keep it as dark as possible and as relaxing as possible. And that's all I have. I hope this helps you understand what is going on if you have been having sleep problems. Um, again, if you want to know more about various sleep disorders and what causes insomnia and causes other sleep uh, disrupt disturbances and all that, you can comment or message me below, or not message, message me on one of my uh, outlets, including my email, which will be in the description box per usual. And if I get enough, I'll make video on just that. Um, as usual, like this video if you did, subscribe, press the notification bell, all that jazz. Check out my links, check out my shop, and thank you for supporting me. I love you all, and I hope you all get a great night's sleep tonight. <laughs> Blessed be, I love you all.